Hello Internet, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and welcome to this video review of the 2021 Merida 96. The 96 is Merida's go fast cross country bike and it's been totally overhauled for this year with a brand new frame, contemporary geometry and a reworked suspension layout. It's still a single pivot platform with a carbon link driving the rear shock, but the frame ditches the rear dropout pivot in favour of a flex stay arrangement that's said to be lighter and also stiffer laterally. To allow the flex to occur as close to the rear axle as possible, Merida has employed a flat mount rear brake caliper. There are plenty of practical touches on this frame, including a SRAM universal derailleur hanger, a threaded bottom bracket shell, and an integrated four slash six millimeter hex key, which is located inside the lever of the rear through axle. Thirsty riders will also be happy to see that this frame now takes two water bottles inside the front triangle. Less practical perhaps, the cables and rear brake hose now route through the upper headset bearing. It certainly looks clean and it allows you to cut the lines quite short. And I can see the engineering appeal from not having to drill so many holes through the carbon head tube. But it does mean you will need to disconnect all of those lines if you want to service the headset or replace a bearing. Now for this year, there are four models in the Merida 96 lineup. Regardless of price, all Merida 96 models feature a full carbon fiber frame, a one by 12 drivetrain, a dropper post, which is fantastic, and a dual remote lockout. Now for all the specs, pricing, geometry, and frame weights on the Merida 96 range, make sure you check out our first look story over at flowmountainbike.com. There is a link in the video description below. Click that and that will give you all the info you need to know about the full range. Here I'll be diving straight into my on-trail experience of testing two bikes from the Merida 96 lineup, which have different build kits, different suspension, different geometry, and quite a different ride quality on the trail. To start off with, let's take a closer look at the 96 RC 9000. Now this is the top dog of the range, and it's the only model to get the premium CF5 carbon mainframe, which Merida says is 200 grams lighter than the CF4 mainframe that comes on all the other models. Otherwise, the carbon swing arm is identical throughout the range. Price on this bike is 9,999 Australian dollars, which is a lot of cash, but believe it or not, you're actually getting quite a lot for your money here. There's Fox factory suspension with a 32 step cast fork and a float DPS shock. There's a Fox transfer dropper post, which will be a Kashima model on production models. There's a Shimano XTR 1x12 drivetrain, which Merida has paired to race face next SL carbon cranks because duh, they're lighter. And there's a set of XTR race brakes. We've also got a DT Swiss XRC 1501 carbon wheel set, which are wrapped with 2.25 inch wide Maxxis Recon race tires. Confirmed weight for our test bike here is just 10.52 kilograms and that's weighed without pedals and with the tire set up tubeless. At 175 centimeters tall I've been riding a medium size in the 96. It's got a generous reach of 453 millimeters which is the longest of any XC bike I've tested. The seat tube is also uber steep at 76.5 degrees and combined with a 70 millimeter stem and 740 mil wide flat bars, it delivers a very long, low and aggressive riding position. It's worth mentioning that our test bikes have had the steerer tubes cut as short as possible. Production bikes will have longer steerer tubes and 25 millimeters of headset spaces in order to tweak the bar height. Otherwise, I set up the Fox 32 step cast fork as per usual, and I ran the rear shock with 30% sag as per Merida's recommendations. Now that is quite a lot of sag when most brands would recommend around 20 to 25% for their XC bikes. Also because of the low average leverage ratio, operating pressures in the rear shock are quite low. For my 68 kilo riding weight, I needed just 130 PSI and I set the rebound damping halfway with seven out of 14 clicks. I did fit a tire invader insert into the rear wheel to give a little bit more rim and tire protection. And I set tire pressures around 21 to 23 PSI on the front 
and 23 to 25 PSI on the rear. So let's first talk about the strengths of the 96 RC9000. Well, I have to say that Merida totally hit the nail on the head in terms of geometry and suspension on this bike. It's vastly more stable than its predecessor, and it's also one of the most stable cross-country bikes I've ever tested. The 68.5 degree head angle and that 44 millimeter fork offset enhance composure at speed. And paired to the long reach, this bike has a much broader footprint on the trail and a confidence-inspiring stance on the descents. The dropper post is, of course, a stellar choice, and that gives you plenty of room to breathe when you're dancing down technical descents. The 150 mil stroke is overkill for an XC bike, but I'm glad to see a dropper post on here rather than none at all. The suspension delivers great sensitivity with excellent traction and a nice amount of progression to help soak up bigger impacts with impressive control for a 100 mil XC bike. It is reasonably active on the climbs if you're just plodding along. And indeed, Merida has designed the kinematics to be quite neutral with anti-squat sitting around 100% at sag. It's not as overtly snappy under power as the Trek Supercaliber or the Specialized Epic, particularly if you're mashing the pedals out of the saddle. Certainly on smoother climbs, you'll be wanting to make use of that dual remote lockout. However, the active suspension performance does dish out excellent traction on loose rocky pinch climbs. The seated climbing position is also fantastic. That steep seat tube angle puts your hips in a powerful pedaling position, and the long and low cockpit ensures you've got plenty of weight pushing into the front tire to reduce front wheel wander on steeper pinches. Certainly the more technical the terrain, whether you're going up or down the mountain, the better the 96 gets. As for the downsides of this bike, well, unfortunately, the twist lock remote was about as loose as a wizard's sleeve, rendering it entirely unusable. According to Merida, the handlebars on our test bikes are slightly undersized. And since the tolerances are quite tight on those twist lock remotes, there was just too much play for it to stay put. Even if I left the remote alone in the unlock position though, Bizarrely, it had a tendency to release the cable and automatically lock out the suspension on the trail, which was obviously no bueno. This possibly hints at a compatibility issue between the RockShox twist lock and Fox's push to unlock damper configuration. Either way, the solution for me was to fit a Fox under the bar remote lockout and a bike yoke two by dropper lever. Now this setup isn't as ergonomically appealing, but it's totally worked without fuss and it does deliver slightly neater cable routing too. Speaking of the dropper post, that stopped returning properly after the first couple of rides, which was a bit of a bummer. While that was getting serviced at Fox, I fitted a bike yoke Divine SL. I really like this post. It's nearly 200 grams lighter than the transfer. And I do think that 80 mil travel is slightly more appropriate for XC racing applications. Now out of all the XC bikes I've tested recently, the closest to the Merida 96 RC9000 would have to be the Orbea Oise M Team. Now, if you want to know how these two bikes compare, make sure you click that link in the video description below to read the full review on this bike here, which includes a comparison to the Orbea Oise. Now, the other bike I've been testing is the 96 8000, and this is quite different to the other 96 RC models. It still has a full carbon frame and that single pivot flex stay suspension design, and you've still got 100 mil travel on the back. Up front though, we have a 120 mil travel RockShox SID Ultimate fork. Now that does lift up the bike and slacken off the angles. The head angle on this bike is 67 degrees, which is very slack for an XC bike. You'll also find aggressive 2.3 inch wide Maxxis Minion DHR2 tires, and we've also got more powerful braking with a four piston XT brake caliper on the front to match the two piston flat mount caliper on the rear. There's a Reynolds TR309 wheel set with 30 millimeter wide carbon rims. And we've got a SRAM Eagle drivetrain with a clever mix of GX and X01 components. Instead of downgrading the cassette and the crank set, which is what most brands do, Merida up specs to a carbon crank set and an X01 cassette. Along with the X01 chain, you get crisper shifting and lighter weight overall. Confirmed weight for our test bike here is 11.63 kilograms, again, without pedals and with the tire set up tubeless. I've also been riding a medium size in the 96 8000, which has fitted me well. There's even a little bit of breathing room there with the 150 mil travel dropper post. Though for riders in that 175 to 180 centimeter height range who may be considering a large, 
large, it's worth pointing out that the seat tube length gets 30mm longer on the large, and it also comes with a 170mm dropper post. Overall, the riding position on this bike is slightly more relaxed than the 96RC, as well as the slacker angles, the bottom bracket sits 9mm higher off the ground, and the reach also shortens to 440mm. It also comes with a slightly shorter 60mm stem, but it does have the same 740mm wide flat bars. Personally, I'd like to see wider bars to give the stability and leverage that this bike deserves, and it would also help to further differentiate the 8000 from the RC models. Again, Merida recommends a healthy 30% sag for that Sid Luck shock. I ran that at 160 PSI and set rebound damping halfway with five out of 10 clicks. Now it's worth pointing out that you will need a 2.5 millimeter hex key to adjust rebound damping on that shock. Handily, there's one of those integrated into the rebound adjuster in the fork. Just pull that out and you can then adjust the shock's rebound damping. I had a sneaking suspicion this bike was gonna make me wanna do normal things on the trail, so I fitted a Cushcore XC insert into the rear wheel, and I set tyre pressures at 20 psi on the front and 22 psi on the rear. So what does the Merida 96 8000 do well? With it being less focused on racing and more on having a good time on the trail, this bike delivers a curiously distinctive ride quality. It's still sharp and whippy thanks to the lightweight carbon frame and the lean cockpit, and the stiff swing arm is taut and responsive, giving plenty of natural pedal efficiency. Overall, the suspension is plusher though with greater initial sensitivity compared to the Fox-equipped RC9000. The Sid Luck shock is more progressive too and that enhances this bike's bottom out support. The suspension is also poppier and that means this bike loves to jump and play with the terrain with the taller front end, making it easier to pick up the front wheel. The 35 millimeter fork chassis lends a load of confidence and it's also smoother and far more controlled than its skinnier 32 millimeter cousins. The stupendously grippy Minion DHR2 tyres deliver what feels like an unending amount of traction, whether it's dry and hard packed or wet and loose. And it's really these two changes in the fork and tyre choice which make a huge difference in maximising this bike's capabilities compared to the RC models. You can either attack the same descents just faster and with more confidence, or seek out more challenging terrain altogether. I did ride it on similar trails to what I would normally take 130 or 140 mil travel bike on. And while it did occasionally feel hilariously underbiked, the suspension and tires did a remarkable job of saving me whenever I went a step too far. Now the tires are draggy and at nearly 900 grams each, they're also quite heavy. This is noticeable on the climbs where you're constantly accelerating and decelerating as you move up and over rocks and roots on the trail. But the big volume tires do help to smooth off those harsher edges and combined with the active suspension design there is a ton of traction here. I did push the saddle forwards on the rails to help steepen the effective seat tube angle so it was within about half a degree of the RC model. Although the extra 300 grams of rotational mass means it's not a zippy, overall it is a comfortable climber. So what didn't go so well on the 96 8000? Well the twist lock remote isn't as bad on this bike but it still rotates slightly whenever you throttle it backwards to lock out the suspension. The main bolt and thread appear to be made of cheese so further tightening isn't possible. It's also not a good ergonomic match with the Shimano dropper post lever. They're too close together, my thumb would actually rub up against the grip whenever I activated the dropper. Personally, I'd be happy to see Merida ditch the remote lockout entirely on the 8000, which would also help to tidy up the cockpit. Speaking of, I'm also not totally convinced by the internal headset cable routing. It does look neat, and I didn't have any problems throughout testing, but it does make servicing the headset a more involved process. And while I really like the idiot-proof Maxxis Minions, this is a very aggressive tyre choice for such a lightweight XC bike. I can see this bike having more appeal in the Aussie market if it was specced with a faster rolling rear tyre, like a Dissector or a Recon. Out of curiosity, I did end up swapping the wheels between our test bikes. With the lighter DT Swiss wheels and Recon race tyres fitted to the 8000, there was a hefty boost to this bike's acceleration, its climbing enthusiasm, and its ability to maintain speed on traversing terrain. It certainly shows that with a spare set of tires at least, this bike could comfortably double duty between weekday trail rides and weekend racing duties. 
Now, out of all the bikes I've tested over the past 12 months, the closest competitor to the Merida 96 8000 would have to be the Specialized Epic Evo. Now, I've put a detailed comparison between these two bikes in the review of the 96 8000, so make sure you click that link in the video description below to check it out. And that brings us to the verdict of the new Merida 96. With this new platform, Merida has ushered in a vastly more capable bike that features up to the minute geometry, a responsive carbon frame and progressive suspension performance. There's certainly room for improvement with that twist lock remote, but otherwise these two bikes are spec'd really well. And I love that they come with dropper posts and they can fit two water bottles. If it's pure XC racing and riding that you're all about, the 96RC delivers a refined and comfortable ride quality with a powerful climbing position and excellent traction and stability on rougher trails. Without any funky proprietary suspension to worry about, the 96RC is a highly practical choice and out of all the XC bikes that I've tested, this is the most well-rounded performer. In comparison, the 96 8000 with its aggro rubber and that 120mm fork delivers a raucous ride quality that successfully bridges the gap between the 96 RC and the 120 trail bike. It's got a ton of traction for ripping through corners, and since it's lighter and poppier than your average trail bike, it'll have you skipping and jumping your way down far more technical trails than a 100mm travel bike should really be on. If you'd like to know more about the Merida 96, the full reviews of these two bikes here are now live on flowmountainbike.com. Make sure you click the links in the video description below, and that will take you through to the reviews on both of these bikes here. Now, if you've got any questions for me about the Merida 96, chances are they're already answered in the full reviews. If not, drop them into the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for plenty more video reviews just like this one coming your way in the near future. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys. I'll see you next time. Toot!